Maria Mahati, <laughs> welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us right into the storm, into the <laughs> yeah. rain. How are you doing? You know, since I start my journey, mm. since Guinea, every country I pass, it's raining. Like I was surprised when I crossed Angola and it was raining. I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> I want some sunshine. <laughs> not, in, not in Cape Town very soon, but um, well, there you got some sunshine and you got yeah. a bit of rain. If you look up at the window, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's sunshine. But you know what they say about the rain, eh? It's the mercy, it's rahmah from Allah. Yeah. So there we go. It's His rahmah, it's His mercy yeah. that has brought you here safely. Yeah. So looking forward to hearing all about your journey from Morocco, Casablanca to be yes. precise, yeah. to Cape Town. And you know what I said, Ufe, you crazy girl. <laughs> 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 but uh, we also want to say thank you to... Um, Yusuf Kanoni for um, also accompanying Mariam into the studios of Radio 786. Assalamu alaikum, Yusuf. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, sister Jamila, and to all the staff of Radio 786. Are you um, good? And to all, to all your listeners of uh, FYI. Yes, indeed. Are you well, sir? Uh, alhamdulillah, we are coping. The, the weather is, uh, is absolutely well, nice and cold. It it's, is. It's freezing and it's free, free, more freezing than last year. Mm. So we can feel it this year very, very yeah. bit tough and Absolutely. out, out there, Absolutely. Out there. I must just say thank you for accompanying Miriam and bringing it to the studios of Radio 76. We're looking forward um, to listening to her journey from, sure. like I said, Casablanca all the way to Cape Town. Well, she started from the... Casablanca, the mother city of Morocco, to the mother city of the Republic of South Africa. All right, there we have it. <laughs> so let's let's, uh, Miriam, then share what inspired you to embark on this incredible journey from the mother city of Morocco, as Yusuf has said, to the mother city. Yeah. So for me, before this journey, I was so motivated uh, for uh, climbing. I was uh, hiking a lot mm -hmm. and in the same time I like cycling. I was using my bike just to go to the work, to the to meet my friends. I don't use transportation. So and they said why to not mix these two hobbies together. So I I like uh, to climb uh, highest mountains uh, like Kilimanjaro when I finish uh, of the highest mountains in Morocco. So I said okay, let's go there but not by plan and it's gonna be the it's gonna be a good way to show to the people that like for me as a moroccan woman uh, african that i can do this and i can share more about africa i'm always uh, inspired but by, by african women how they are hard worker how mm. like you see uh, there is lots of countries and you see that always the african uh, women are like we said, Mama Africa, it's like the mother of this continent. So I want to meet more and knew uh, about the different culture and in the same time, mixing my hobbies of cycling and climbing and uh, talking about the climate change. You c we can use like kind of transportation that they are friendly with the nature mm. because with this climate change that we are now uh, we see that it's not easy for us as Moroccan. Now the country is dry. In some other countries, in like in Central Africa or West Africa, it's raining so much. So it's kind of we have to to come down with the nature. Mm. So yeah, I said, okay, let's mix it all together and get get some good projects. So, so what were you doing before you decided to take on this crazy journey? <laughs> yeah, I had a normal life. I was working. In the same time, I was hiking a lot in the weekends, getting holidays. I bought my bike in uh, COVID time and it was the first uh, bike trip for me because the country was closed and the mm. city for my city, Casablanca, it was closed. So I cannot go by bus. So I said, why not buy the by I the see. bike let's mm. see if i will love this hobby of cycling and traveling by bicycle having all my house in my bike and uh, it's then when i start to cycle in morocco and then i said oh i love this, I love um, this. so why not yes africa i'm coming <laughs> oh wow <laughs> so what was your your initial plan for the trip and how did it evolve as you traveled through different countries so for me, I didn't have like, for me, I just check one note that I have this morning. 
my road was to go in uh, from the Sahel, like going to Mali, Burkina, Niger. But now with the conflict that they have in the Sahel, it's not safe for me. So for me, it's I'm not like, okay, I'm going to this country, this country. I'm going to visit this, 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 this. No, for me, it's okay, I will live for today. I will visit this country and then I have to plan. It depends on the visas, how many days I have. Uh, if I feel uh, very, uh, I like the country. So yeah, I'm going to this. So it was like this, not just having a plan. Oh, so you didn't, okay, I, I want to do this um, incredible journey. I've got this dream. Yeah. I'm going to go from Casablanca. I want to travel to Cape Town. I want to do it via using my bicycle, right? Yeah. So surely it takes a lot of planning. How am I going to do this? What is it that I'm going to be needing? Um, how do I break this to my family? Um, and, and so on. So did you not do all of those things? Tick, tick, tick on my, my list. So for me, starting from 2019, yeah. I knew that I want to go to cycle around Africa. So I had like, okay, I'm going to there. But I don't. I didn't have the budget for this. I didn't yeah. have the bike. <laughs> I I bought the va- bike in the uh, the COVID because I'm so short and small. I don't find my size, like for to get in not expensive uh, bike. So then I said, okay, I will every month. I will like make uh, uh, small amounts. I will keep Save it away. It. Mm. This is for my African journey, and I start to do this, and then COVID came. So. For maybe three months, I didn't uh, travel and I live uh, uh, in my parents' house. So I didn't have lots to, of money to, to so I, I, I managed to save some money. Yeah, you didn't have and a lot then, of expense. Yeah. Mm. And then uh, the COVID came and uh, I started to travel a lot with the bike and I started to spend almost all the money I was saving. Uh. and. I started to buy the gears for this, the bike, and everything was expensive. Uh, and then I just started to merge. I was uh, selling my tooth bags and t-shirts, and because people they want to help, they ask me to make this GoFundMe or this like they can send you money. I wasn't so. I didn't want to do this, so I said, okay, if you want to support, you can buy from me. I have, like, it's a shop, online shop. Mm. So people, they start to support so much. So I got uh, lots of support from my friends and lots of people I don't even know. They just follow me on social media. So I managed to get some money from this, and then I got a sponsor for the first year. So it was helping lots. So it just kind of was making the thing easier. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you need a special bike for 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 um, for a trip such as this. Yeah. I mean, one and a half years on the road um, and so on. It takes proper planning, but it seems to me you love living on the edge, yeah. adventurous. Yeah, um, I'm adventurous. I can agree with this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not the good bike that you need. But you, if you are going to make this journey, mm. you have to have a strong mind. It's uh-huh. all in the mind, like even if you have the best gears, the best bike, if you are, don't like your mm. mind is not with you, you, you will not even achieve the so, health. You will be so tired. Yeah. So, yeah. So, OK, now now you've got all of this and, and, and um, you need to now break this news to your parents. I mean, you a young lady and you're going to be doing this on your own, <laughs> traveling, what, 20 countries? Is yeah. It? How do you how, how do you approach your parents and say, <laughs> "Mom, Dad, this is me being crazy again"? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my parents they know that I I'm crazy girl. They they know that they, you know when you have a crazy girl, you have to live with it. Like uh, they know that I'm in the adventure, and mm. if I want to do something, like I will fight for it. So f- when I start, I didn't tell them, okay, I'm going to uh, cycle all around Africa. I said, I'm going to Africa. And they said, okay, for my father, I don't know why, but for him it was, I'm going to Senegal. So every time he's like, oh, you are going to oh, Senegal, they are Muslim, oh, okay, so it's gonna be fine. Oh, and uh, okay, Senegal, no problem. And so I see they don't have a war, okay. For them it was, and then uh, they saw the, in my social media, and uh, they saw that, uh, okay, it's gonna be uh, two years and, uh, uh, I show the map of my uh, ju- my Ru- and then, uh, yeah yeah my route and mm. then my uh, my uh, my brother he comes ah, are you crazy how can you just go for two years what are you with and my mom says oh, what's happening says, I'm telling to my brother 
to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's uh, like step by step you make them, yeah, mm. this is something I want to do. I will be careful. And yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. But now saying you, you're going to be careful. Okay, so we will we'll speak about that, okay. you know, the challenges along the way and so on. So now, um, when did you leave uh, Casablanca? I left uh, Casablanca in uh, the age of January. Okay. Last year. Last year. Yeah. So now you need to obviously have provisions when you decide to take this trip, right? So, so what do you pack? I mean, it's a bicycle. It's yeah. not like a car <laughs> where you have a boot full of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So what do you put into your bike? How do you, how do you prep your bike? And what did you pack? So for my bike, the thing that I learned in mm. this journey to be minimalist. Like for me now, yeah. it's not me two years ago. Like for me now, I'm packing just the thing that I need and they have everything from my bike. I have my tent, I have all my biking, uh, my camping gears and they have a stove and they have uh, uh, the the Moroccan bread. Oh. <laughs> you know, I have everything and the, for cooking, I have everything for cooking. And then I have my clothes, but I don't carry a lot of clothes because it's kind of, I just wash what I need and then, uh, you yeah. know, I'm having two washing one in the night and then make it uh, dry in the mm. next day in the bike. So it's kind of being minimalist and I have uh, all I need like for to, to fix the bike. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of the, the, I have three bags and they are full of things that's essential for this uh, journey. Okay, Yusuf? Yeah, uh, Sister Jamila, when she says the Moroccan bread, mm. so the Moroccan bread is actually, that's a, it's a little, it's a pot, that's a teapot. Oh. That's a Moroccan teapot. Uh -huh. So that's the, the name of the teapot, oh, it's called bread. bread. No, 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 bread, bread, bread is, the, is, is a teapot. <sighs> we actually, she have the Moroccan tea, wherever she's, she park herself and then and she starts make making a Moroccan tea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so did you lose any weight from the time you've left? Uh, you know, even with this <laughs> one and a half year, like, uh, and I got for malaria and, you know, I lost two kilo, three kilo. Oh, yeah, okay. Not, yeah, it's, that's, that's yeah. nothing. Oh, in Africa, yeah. you eat very good. <laughs> oh, okay. We're going to speak about all of that, you know, yeah. but um, just very quickly, 0786101112 on the WhatsApp number. Uh, we have a message that says, Assalamu alaikum. So inspiring to hear uh, this uh, from uh, this Moroccan, mashallah. I also want to travel myself to my country of origin, which is Morocco. May Allah grant her, as monk, may Allah grant her safe travels. I mean, shukran so much uh, to that listener. Um, well done, Mariam says, uh, Sister Fatima Effendi. How old is she? Tell them how old you are, Mariam. Uh, 28. 28 but yeah. when she left the country she was 27 yeah, okay. <laughs> right an amazing lady and as you heard she is uh, 28 years old when she left um, her country Casablanca she was 27 so one and a half years later she ends up in Cape Town so how did you prepare physically and mentally for such an extensive and challenging journey so for me because before such in like before leaving Morocco, I was uh, I took one day one year of holiday from work, so I was cycling around Morocco uh, for uh, almost one year hiking. Goodness. I did, yeah, the high uh, uh, the crossing of the high Atlas Mountains, and I crossed the desert with a nomad. So I was physically I didn't have a problem. Like for me, it's it's not something, and yeah, for m for me, I it's something that I want to do for a long time. So for me, I was excited. Mm. from Morocco to uh, almost uh, Guinea-Bissau. I was so excited. I was full of energy. So yeah, it was. All right, all right. Yeah. Now that, now, okay, so now we want to speak about some of the most significant challenges you faced during your journey. Um, and you mentioned, you know, dealing with malaria and then I also you had bike issues and just off air, um, Yusuf, you spoke about the visa delays that Miriam had. Yeah. So take us through that and how you overcame all of those challenges. So yeah, for me, I I had four malaria. Wow! <laughs> and uh, you know, it's not easy, but yeah, I survived. Like uh, it's just you have to get the pills and everything. It's make you very tired, and it's not. S so where did this happen? Yeah, I got two malarias in Ivory Coast, and I got one in Nigeria and one in Angola. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the one from Angola, I got it in DRC. I was cycling two weeks with this malaria. 
I thought it just because it was hilly and the, the, because of the weather and everything. Mm. But it was malaria when I arrived to Rwanda. It was the malaria, so it was. Uh, but yeah, it was. Uh, so, uh, so how, how, what did you do? I mean, you, like you say, you know, it it does affect your your strength, your energy. Yeah. Then what did you do? How did you overcome malaria? Is big. I mean, yeah. it's not just a a common cold <laughs> that you can just chug off. I drink uh, energy drink. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I just taking the medicine and you know trying to to be good with this malaria living. Uh, mm. Yeah. Okay, and and speak to us about bike the bike issues. Yeah, I got a lot of bike because I don't take the asphalt roads. All the f- almost uh, I take the gravel road, bad roads, and with this rainy season that don't stop in West and Central Africa, the bike don't like this. But I like it, so the bike was always complaining. I got lots of problem mm. with the bike, but yeah, I managed to to fix the problem and made it to South so you, Africa. So you have to fix the problem yeah. it, because you had no support. Eh? You did the solo. Yeah, I met another cyclist. We cycled some parts together. So it's kind of if I have a big problem, if it just to find a way to just fix it and making some something to make it to a big city so I can change the parts that was broken or something like this. But it's all about, you know, managing how to fix the thing and uh, like don't get tired mentally about this, yeah. just continue. Mm. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, you know, yeah, and it works. No, no, getting into the countries and where visas were needed, um, didn't that frustrate you? Because a visa can take quite a bit of time. Yeah, it's sometimes for the visas, it's kind of uh, challenging mm. to get some countries visa it can take you time of wait to get the visa and uh, sometimes it's super expensive you have to pay a lot of money to get the visas and you know uh, for example for uh, one country visa i had to make the residency card of another country to get this visa so wow. it's not that easy to get some visa but yeah it's kind of challenging even for lesotho the visa for lesotho is challenging for me and uh, yeah, it's kind of, uh, you have to, you know, it's, there is a challenge on the road, you have to deal with them and that's that's the journey, it's not about the good thing. Mm. Yeah. So what keeps you motivated then? What keeps you going? Because, I mean, it's, it's very frustrating, like you say, it's it's challenging, you need to improvise, you need to think on your feet. What keeps you going? I love what I do and uh, I'm so happy to share this with another people, to show them how... Africa is beautiful, how people are like very kind and they are always happy to help. It's not just about the war. It's not uh, just about what they show us in the media for lots of years, just the bad, the bad things Mm. of Africa. No, this is Africa. Look how people, they can invite you to their house without even uh, like uh, asking for something. Yeah, sometimes people, they ask for money. People have nothing. People, they... Uh, for them, you, you you are different, you have money, but you, you have like to, it's not, you know, uh, what Africa gave me, it's mm. more than wha- what people can ask for. Like, people are so nice, like for one and a half year, and I'm um, feeling like it's only two months because it was very nice experience. People are so kind, like, but if I had a bad experience, mm. If other people had a bad experience, like in like in su- such kind same uh, adventure or something, it's kind of can be five percent or six percent. But look at me, one and a half year, and I'm just happy about about it. I got robbed once, but you I, did, yeah, I, and I even didn't like remember it because it's kind of can happen even in Casablanca where I live. Like true. So it's not just because it's happening to you here, you have to make like, oh, so well, where Africa is not safe. And, uh, so where were you wrong? It was in Benin, Cotonou. Okay, as long yeah. as it's not here in Cape Town. <laughs> <we are okay>. <laughs> 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 she, 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 um, some uh, or particular memorable experience or encounter that stood out to you during your travels. Sorry. The, you know, a memorable, a oh. good encounter, yes. You know, I have lots uh, that I like. I have, okay. there is a lot of good experience for, from people that's like they offer you the smile in the bad moments of the day. Like you are dealing with something, you have 
someone who just talks to you in in a way they made your day it's kind of a lot of thing uh, seeing the wildlife like something i have mm. dreamed about this like seeing a wild gorilla seeing a wild elephant oh, wow. it was like a dream like you something uh, and you see okay i don't want to be to visit the zoo or like where mm. where animals are just confined blocked, and mm. yeah you are seeing the the animals where they belong in the wildlife so it's amazing no <laughs> absolutely yeah. amazing and scary at the same time <laughs> hey yeah it is indeed yeah. i'm just thinking would you do that uh, yusuf would you do what she did oh well, inshallah my plan is something else with out of back my plan is casablanca cave down by my feet oh okay we're going to speak about that when it happens <laughs> Now, any was there any moment you know scary moments for you yeah there is some lots of scary moments mm, like for example me. going to nigeria where all of people talk about kidnapping mm. you know you go to those there is five people stop you they will kidnap you here you ask the police they told you yes it's not safe they kidnap people there but yeah it was kind of scary why was what i'm doing here like in some parts of nigeria i said why I did i just come here and then i got one of the best experience in this country like yes it's kind of there is a risk but i spent two months in nigeria i cycled more than 3000 wow. kilometers in wow. nigeria and it was one of the best experience in this journey what really yes okay what made it you know stood out like this Tell so us. i think because nigeria is not touristic country mm. and it's kind of yeah everyone is the red zone of africa and people are not used to tourists so they are very you know i think that tourists when they come a place you know it's okay what are people really they are not because you know everything is giving money giving money to you know just like they think you are coming you see someone you give him money you give him candy mm. so for them as a tourist you are just the money and the and the but nigeria was different the culture was very interesting and the difference between the for example lagos to the north of nigeria was oh uh, like amazing people the the difference of the culture uh, culture and everything was kind of so interesting like mm. you feel the vibe of the the country the beauty of the country was amazing mm. and they embraced you as as a foreigner so when you know when hearing all of these things you mentioned um the kidnapping and it not being safe and mm. and then overall you just had the most beautiful experience the but now you you know at the start of our of our chat you mentioned you know you would camp you would put up your tent yeah so now knowing that this place is filled with danger um were you still putting up your tent no, and, and in Nigeria I didn't ah, camp in Nigeria okay. I tried to like hotels or the police station yeah it's right like okay um you know i'm sharing my experience in social media like to show okay this is africa this is our continent and yeah. this and then i'm going to some unsafe places i'm going there i know though that it's not safe i'm going there and i'm going to make camp and and if something happened to me everyone oh we told you that africa is not safe we told mm, you so mm. it's kind of okay be yeah. responsible yeah okay wonderful now um So you mentioned the beauty and the hospitality as well of Angola. Um tell us about that experience. Yeah, for me Angola I didn't have a lot of information about Angola like uh, you know it's kind of going to the unknown. Mm. So I just crossed the country I don't speak Portuguese and uh, I was <laughs> like okay I know abrigado is what she thank you and the uh, comer was uh, to eat. So and when I cross and I cross in the weekend I didn't have uh, the SIM card and I decide to take small roads. So when I took the small roads no SIM card for me because it's small roads. Yeah. And then I spent one week in these small roads. They are not used to tourists because there is a broken bridge so cars don't pass there. Oh. So f- for me w- with the bike I could cross with the pirogue. So then they are not used to tourists. and that's what I like and uh, I don't speak the language mm. so it was so fun and then the people they were so kind and you know they are uh, uh, always like uh, the joy you see people are happy to see you to help mm. to stop to have a chat with you or offering you uh, water uh, when I stopped to pay coffee someone pay, <laughs> I found that someone paid already like oh, it's kind wow. of yeah 
Oh, wow. That's amazing. Um, just going back to the WhatsApp line, 0786101112. Salams, Jamila. Mashallah, what a heart-rendering story. May Allah give you the strength and energy to fulfill your dreams. You are a superwoman. Love your show, Jamila, from Mumtaz Mauza. Thank you so much uh, for that. Um, and, and then we have a, a listener saying, not Cape to Cairo. <laughs> Why did she not inoculate before she left? Why didn't you take vaccines? Okay, that is a personal thing um, and a personal choice. Um, uh, I took the vaccines, but the malaria, even if you have vaccines, it's it's no malaria. It's kind of you have to mm. take the pills before going. So it's kind of... Uh, I have all the vaccines that I need, but yeah. Mm, exactly. All right. So let's let's speak about. Um, you, so you spoke about the hospitality and the kindness of the people you meet along the way. Yeah. So yeah, uh, all over this like one and a half year, like the small villages, like we are not talking about the big cities. The big cities is not the country. Like if you are like, there is a difference between tourist traveler, like because you are not going to big cities, the tourist attractions, and mm. you are expecting to have uh, to have like local experience. No, no, you are going to. But for me, I was because I was on the bike. I was always taking uh, small roads, and then you have uh, f- with the bike because I'm not fast. Like I have always connected with the locals and people, kids. So it's easy to have a contact. So I'm not fast, and then uh, mm. people are always like very, very kind and the, the hospitality uh, because it was raining all the time in West Africa, Central Africa. So I, uh, every night just asking uh, people to push the tent in the garden or giving me some place with the roof and they were happy to give you even a room if they have. Oh, okay. And there are people, they have nothing. They want to give you uh, like food, offering you food and anything. And this is something like you don't find anywhere in this world and too with this all the development that's mm. happening in the world. Like not, if, you know, going to the big city and asking someone, can I sp- sleep on your, no. Indeed. And even in the Western Cape, like people, they were so nice and kind and offering me a place to stay and because it was so cold. Yes. Mm-hmm. So South was Africa. Just, I was going to ask, how do you, you know, with the climate, um, how did you protect yourself? Yeah, I didn't expect to, that uh, South Africa, that's that, that's cold like like this. It was so super cold. Even in Namibia, it was mine four in one night. And uh, I didn't have all the clothes for this, but yeah, it's, you get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you mentioned, you know, it's it's true what you say, and it's a little lesson for us. You know, when we travel, we must try and 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 be with the locals to really experience that country and to experience the culture. Yeah, mm. and it enriches you. Yeah, you know, yeah, of course. Like it's not like the same if someone come and visit my country. It's not going just for first Marrakesh and. The touristic place and said yeah. oh i visit morocco i didn't like it uh, come people come and go into three place three days uh, tour guided and oh, oh I, mm. I visited this it's just getting the stamps and like having few uh, times there but if you want to to have a local experience you mm. have to go deep and like having lots of time with the people and locals seeing the nature and everything to see that you have travelers in this country indeed now um how about the foods what what was um good and what was not so good <laughs> yeah. so for me since i left i was like okay i don't like to cook to be honest <laughs> so <laughs> for me i will eat what locals eat like just i will see that you are you are eating this i will like eat what locals is the and that's it like for example, in Sierra Leone, Liberia, they have only the porridge, like the maize, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, up, yeah, up pop it. Mm. yeah, and uh, they have just some the green uh, sauce, and this is what what I ate in the morning and the, for the lunch and for the dinner for like <laughs> one month. This is what my my food, but yeah, it's kind the part of the adventure. I'm. I'm eating what people they eat and the experience of even the local like food. Not like I will eat pasta every night. Mm. So it's the experience not the same. Yeah, yeah. Yes. All right. Yusuf? You know, uh, Sister Jamila, when she was talking about many uh, African countries, they mm. eat uh, the porridge, uh, that's, uh, the pop as we, uh, as we name it here in South yeah. Africa. There's a lot of nutrition in the pop. 
if you look at it that way, a lot of nutrition is better than the pasta. Mm. So the pasta is more like if you want to run a race tomorrow, for example. Yeah. But uh, mm. we eat in a pub every single day. It takes you. All, it, it takes long. It's almost like an allergy eye. So it's almost like you're riding on diesel. So there you don't go. burn as much. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, just going back to the WhatsApp line, 0786101112. Salam, Shamila, and lovely guest. Is the lady traveling alone? Uh, so I'm traveling alone. I met another cyclist and we kind of uh, cycled some part together and then everyone take different road and then we met uh, again in some countries, but it was mostly alone. Mm, brave woman indeed. Now you documented your journey extensively on social media, Miriam. Yeah. How did you manage to keep your followers updated while on the road? I'm sure there were times that network problem and like you've mentioned some and so on yeah so yeah it's not easy to like travel like this and mm. stay connected and like i'm sharing on youtube and even instagram facebook and all the social media and yeah i sometimes like if i go to the capital city normally there you have always a good internet so yeah. i can i take some breaks so i can update everything and then just how often how often yeah. did you do these updates sorry how often do you do it? Yeah, it depends because sometimes you have good internet in some mm. countries, you don't have to stop. But normally, I it depends. But in some countries, it's only the capital that you can get. But in other countries, you have internet everywhere. So yes. you don't mm. need just to go to the capital city. What kind of response and support did you receive from your online community throughout your trip? Oh, I got lots of uh, support from, mm. yeah. So what's... Um, Tell us a little bit about that. What I mean, messages I'm sure you got. Yeah. And so. so it's kind of sometimes the people, they just, my, the Moroccan woman, they send me that she, I'm so inspiring and I'm um, trying to like, they are trying to make some, also some travel like this yeah. because they got inspired from my journey. Sometimes people, they send me pictures that they bought new bikes. So, oh, wow. so it's kind of lots of, uh, and it's a motivation for me also. You know, see, it's, mm. yeah, you are sharing your journey, you are traveling for yourself and also for some other people like to inspire and to show them that you can do this if I do it. If I did it, you can yeah. do it. Yeah. And your friends, are they not planning to join you? <laughs> yeah, they are planning to join me in Tanzania. Oh, yeah. wow. All yeah. right. Now, you are. You mentioned you're going to Lesotho next, right? Yeah. Okay. What are your plans for this upcoming leg of your of your journey? So, I'm trying to go up to the mountains. I miss mountains. <laughs> so, Lesotho is the you, best part of... Mm. Maluti. Yeah. Maluti yeah. Mountains. Maluti yeah. Mountains. It's very cold, yeah, darling. I know. It oh. is. Yeah. All right. So yeah. I, I explained to her actually, Jamila. I mm. told her uh, um, the winter in southern African countries it's very, 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 very tough. Yeah. Mm. And besides that, but she wants to go also through Lesotho into Zimbabwe. I think, yeah, Zimbabwe. No, Zambia. from Lesotho to Mozambique and then Malawi, Zimbabwe, and trying to go to Botswana and Zimbabwe, Zambia, mm. and then going up to Tanzania. Oh, wonderful. Indeed, we've run out of time, but just very quickly, a listener wants to know, um, how does her family feel about her journey being alone? Are they not uh, very worried about her? Yeah, they are very worried about <laughs> me every day, but yeah, you know, this is life. They are this worried. Is, about and <laughs> and uh, besides that, uh, Sister Jamila, every... Every country she reached that Moroccan embassy, they know about uh, she's yeah. arriving in that country. Like, for example, in South Africa, we already contacted uh, the, uh, the Moroccan embassy in Pretoria. They know about her. She's going to go up there to extend the passport to, the, to get the new passport because the, the first the passport she had is already full with all the stamps. Yeah. So I, we spoke to the to the Moroccan embassy in Pretoria. They're waiting for her to, ex, to get a new passport. Wonderful yeah. support from Yusuf as well. Salam, Sister Jamila. This is a very, very brave lady. Hats off to you, my sister, brother Yusuf. You must try to challenge her. I'm so proud of her very inspiring program nice hearing your voice brother Yusuf from Auntie Gori and Auntie Gori says woman power <laughs> indeed woman power we have a run out of time I think we have so just very quickly to, to wrap up then your final message to our dear listeners yeah so the final message first of all thank you for having me in this uh, and yeah, I um, just want to say that if you want to do this something in this life, just 
work for it, do it, and uh, Africa is not a country. So stop saying Africa is dangerous. Africa is 15 for country, and it's beautiful, and people are nice and kind. So yes, that's it. Indeed, <laughs> you are really amazing, Mariam. Everything of the best with your um, uh, journey ahead. And yeah, Tanzania is going to be beautiful. Zanzibar. Mm. Yeah. On the <laughs> island. I love it. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, Yusuf, I want to say thank you to you once again because it seems to me that Yusuf is a good, great support here <laughs> for you as well. So well done. Now, uh, shukran to you also, Sister Jamila, and to Zainobin and uh, Shanaz, to all the staff of Radio 786. Uh, you know, uh, my heart is always with Radio 786 and to the listeners of Radio 786. But besides that, I'll, actually, I want to ask uh, my sister Mariam. It doesn't matter because both were born Moroccan, so um, mm. I'm proudly South African and Moroccan. So I want to ask her when she arrived in to the border from of- Namibia into South Africa, mm. how did she feel and how did she found the mother city? Okay, well, she's got 30 seconds to quickly <sighs> tell us. Yeah, South Africa, it's an amazing country. When I, and you know, you have mountains, you have the ocean, and it was very nice to see this mix of landscapes together again because I like ocean and the... We've and got the, everything. Yeah, we've got nice. the mountains, we've got the flowers, we've got the uh, the oceans, we've got everything. Yeah. But you ask her, did, you, did you try the Sunday Cosistas or not? I don't know. Did she? Did you have the Sunday Cosistas? What is That's it? a it's tradition a, of it's the... It's a sweet treat one. If you yeah, didn't, yeah, then you, yeah. you're yeah, supposed yeah, yeah, to yeah, give yeah. it to you. I, I tried it in Namibia. They told me it's South Africa. No, no, no. no, 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 no. But it's no. Namibia. You need to get it here. So okay. Sunday we will give you the... There we go. It's a promise. The treat of the... Okay. The Cape Absolutely. Malay uh, yeah, tradition you come of and, the Kusista. Otherwise you have to come and visit me here <laughs> because we do a program called Kuchlame and that's what we do. We okay. eat Kusistas <laughs> on a Sunday. If you don't eat Kusista in the mother city, then you didn't have Yeah, I have to try this. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We have to leave it there, Mariam Belkehel, all the way from Casablanca, Morocco, cycled to the beautiful city of Cape Town. And we wish her well with her journey further, inshallah.